Tonight, the dangerous winter storm slamming several states. Parts of I-70 in Denver shut down for a time. The accidents, the images coming in. The major headline tonight from the Florida judge in the Donald Trump classified documents case. And breaking news right now in New York City. Word of horrific shooting in a subway station. First tonight, tracking this major winter storm at this hour. More than a foot of snow around Denver. I-70, the accidents, the shutdowns. Some cars stranded for 17 hours. Severe storms now from Texas up to Ohio. Tornado watches up right now across multiple states going into the night. And what's coming to the Northeast tomorrow? Ginger Z timing this out. There was also breaking news. The jury right now deliberating the fate of the father charged in his son's deadly school shooting. What we learned just a short time ago. News on Donald Trump tonight and that word just in from the Florida judge in the classified documents case. What she said about one of his motions to dismiss and what she signaled in court today about the case overall. The breaking news here in New York City, the images coming in after that shooting at a subway station. Authorities say a man shot in the head in critical condition at this hour. Subway riders ducking for cover just days after the National Guard was sent into the subway. With Roe versus Wade overturned in this country tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris, the first vice president to ever visit a Planned Parenthood that provides abortions, telling voters women's reproductive rights, abortion rights are on the ballot this presidential election. And tonight here, what's happened even in conservative states when the issue of abortion has been put on the ballot? Tonight here, the rare and stunning rebuke of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Here in the U.S., Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the highest ranking Jewish official in the U.S. government, declaring there should be elections in Israel. SpaceX and the launch of its Starship rocket crossing several major hurdles today, but then burning up on its way back to Earth. And the bigger question tonight, how soon do they plan on putting astronauts on that rocket to the moon? In upstate New York tonight, the FedEx tractor trailer sideswiping a car with a family and baby inside, then off the bridge dangling. Multiple people hurt. And America strong tonight, the dog they thought was gone, but a hiker discovered 1,000 feet up the mountain. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. We do begin tonight with the dangerous winter storm. Multiple states, the Denver area slammed tonight. Dangerous driving, hundreds of flights canceled at the Denver airport alone. Schools closed, 100,000 customers without power tonight. They could see up to a foot of additional snow this evening. And now a tornado watch from Texas right up to Ohio with this system before it heads into the northeast next. Look at the images tonight from I-70 near Denver. Dozens of cars and trucks stuck in heavy snow. This is Evergreen, Colorado. Some cars stranded for 17 hours. Plows trying to clear the interstate today. Up to three feet of snow and near hurricane strength winds in the mountains. Multiple ski areas shut down tonight. And this is the scene at the Denver airport where I mentioned hundreds of flights canceled and delayed from this. And now the real tornado concerns across several states as we head into the night. ABC's Mola Lenghi leading us off from Denver tonight. Tonight, vehicles sliding, stalling, and stranded from a massive weather system dumping feet of late season snow in the Rockies. This is a sight we've been seeing all day. Drivers spinning out, getting stuck, needing help from Colorado Department of Transportation folks getting towed out, getting pushed, whatever it takes. Roads out here are treacherous and will only get worse before they get better. Outside Denver, multiple stretches of Interstate 70 shut down, the crucial highway turning into a travel nightmare. Tractor trailers spinning their wheels, drivers getting out to push their cars. Charlie Stubblefield and his team from Mountain Recovery trying to clear the interstate. We are stuck with three feet of snow probably. Look at the top of that semi right now. Uh, vehicles that have been stranded out here for a good 17 hours. It's right there. See it? Yeah. Meanwhile, in the heartland, a severe weather outbreak is unfolding. With 35 million Americans under threat from Texas to Ohio. A suspected tornado touching down in Milton, Kentucky this afternoon. Two people were hurt. We have multiple trees down, probably 50 to 100 houses that have some kind of damage. AccuWeather storm chasers catching this massive twister as it tore across farmland west of Topeka, Kansas overnight. Those storms dumping up to softball-sized hail. Well, the winter storm watch continues at least into Friday morning. Of course, it's still snowing. As you can see by this down tree, there's still a lot to clean up. And even once it stops snowing, travel and the roads are expected to remain dicey 
throughout the Denver metro area, David. Right through tomorrow morning. Mola Lenghi leading us off tonight. Mola, thank you. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z timing all of this out. And of course, it's not just the snow, Ginger. It's this tornado threat now going into the evening hours. Nine states, David, have tornado watches at this moment. So from Toledo back to Texarkana, you've got a tornado watch. And then just a moment ago, Dallas got put in a severe thunderstorm watch. Those go till midnight or even after. We know that nocturnal tornadoes can be even more dangerous because you've got to have two ways of warning that'll wake you up. So looking at that, we take it through 4 a.m. The severe storms go all the way through Mississippi, Alabama, and far northern Louisiana. We're going to watch now the cold side of the storm because there's an additional six to 12 inches on top of what Mola just showed you. In the northeast here, we'll be breaking up this record warmth with some showers. David. Ginger Z with us here tonight. Ginger, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow morning on GMA. There is breaking news at this hour in the trial of the Michigan father charged in his son's deadly school attack. The jury has now reached a verdict. Trevor Alt with the breaking developments. Tonight, a Michigan jury finding James Crumbly guilty of four Man counts of involuntary manslaughter. Guilty of involuntary manslaughter. One for each of the students his son murdered at Oxford High School in 2021. Last month, his wife Jennifer convicted on the same charges the first parent held criminally responsible in their child's school shooting. In James's trial, prosecutors allege he was negligent, ignoring signs of his son's deteriorating mental health and buying him the gun used in the shooting. James Crumbly was presented with the easiest, most glaring opportunities to prevent the deaths of these four students, and he did nothing. Hours before the shooting, James and his wife met with their son's counselor over concerning drawings, but they declined to take their son home from school. James did not take the stand in his own defense, but his wife testified during her trial that it was her husband's responsibility to keep the family gun secure. It was more his thing, so I let him handle that. The defense argues James had no way of knowing what his son was planning. James Crumbly had no idea what his son was capable of. David, involuntary manslaughter carries a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. Jennifer Crumbly's sentencing is already scheduled. It's set for next month. David, Trevor, on this case again tonight. Trevor, thank you. We turn now to the breaking news from Florida. Late today, the federal judge ruling on one of Donald Trump's motions to dismiss the classified documents case against him there, ruling she would not dismiss. And what she said in court about the case overall. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Eric Katursky, now. <laughs> Donald Trump arriving at a Florida court, his lawyers trying to convince a federal judge the special counsel's case over his handling of classified documents should be dismissed. Trump's team arguing the charges were unconstitutionally vague. But Judge Aileen Cannon, who Trump appointed to the bench, ruling tonight she will not dismiss the case on those grounds. She's still considering another motion to dismiss, but after a full day of arguments, Cannon strongly signaling she is inclined to let the case move forward, saying your arguments might have some force but it's difficult to see how this leads to a dismissal of the indictment. Are you prepared to go to trial on March 25th? Her ruling coming just hours after a surprise announcement in New York. The Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg proposing a one-month delay in the start of Trump's hush money trial. Stormy, Trump's accused of trying to conceal payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. The first of the former president's criminal trials was supposed to get underway less than two weeks from now. Prosecutors said they just got their hands on tens of thousands of pages and documents from the Justice Department. And they want to give Trump's legal team up to 30 days to review them. Prosecutors noting there will be another production of documents by next week. Trump has pleaded not guilty. His legal team demanding months to go over the new records, which would delay the trial even more. So to be clear on all of this now, Aaron Katursky with us live. Aaron, so in Florida, Judge Cannon strongly uh, signaling that this documents case uh, will move forward. Uh, in New York City, this hush money trial likely pushed back at least a month. And then tomorrow, we're expecting a major decision in the Georgia election interference case. A judge there set to decide uh, whether D.A. Fawny Willis will stay on this case. He is going to decide that as soon as tomorrow, David. The judge is deciding whether Fonnie Willis's relationship with another member of the prosecution team posed a financial conflict of interest. Whatever way that ruling goes, it is almost certain one side or the other will try to appeal it, potentially delaying that case, too. David? We'll wait for late word on that tomorrow from you, Aaron. Thank you. Meantime, there is breaking news here in New York City tonight, a horrific shooting at a subway station. Authorities say a man was shot in the head and is in critical condition at this hour. Subway riders seen ducking for cover. And of course, this all comes just days after the National Guard was sent into the subway by New York Governor Kathy Hochul. 
Let's get right to ABC's Ariel Reshef with late reporting. Ariel, what do we know so far? Well, David, we want to take you straight to some harrowing video that is coming into our newsroom. You can see subway riders ducking for cover and screaming in horror moments after a man was shot in the head inside that station in downtown Brooklyn shortly before 5 p.m., just as that rush hour is beginning tonight. The victim seen here on a stretcher rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Police sources say that a suspect is in custody and a weapon has been recovered. But as you mentioned, David, this comes just days after Governor Hochul sent the National Guard into stations across this city amid a 13% spike in subway crime so far this year. David. Ariel Reshef tonight. Ariel, thank you. We turn out of the race for president and tonight Vice President Kamala Harris, the first vice president to ever visit a Planned Parenthood that provides abortions, telling voters women's reproductive rights, abortion rights are on the ballot this presidential election. And tonight here, what's happened even in conservative states when the issue of abortion has been put on the ballot after Roe went down? Here's ABC's Rachel Scott tonight. Tonight, Kamala Harris making history as the first vice president to visit a woman's health clinic where abortions are provided, a sign of just how central this issue has become to the Biden campaign. And walking through this clinic, that's what I saw, are people who have dedicated their lives to the profession of providing health care in a safe place that gives people dignity. And I think we should all want that for each other. 21 states have banned or restricted access to abortion since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. How dare these elected leaders believe they are in a better position to tell women what they need, to tell women what is in their best interest. We have to be a nation that trusts women. Democrats keenly aware voters have moved to protect abortion rights in all six states where it has appeared on the ballot since Roe versus Wade was overturned, including conservative states like Kansas, Kentucky, and Ohio. In his State of the Union speech, President Biden noting that in the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe, the justices themselves wrote, women are not without political power. You're about to realize just how much you get right about that. The president is counting on abortion to drive voters to the polls this November. As many as 14 states could have measures related to abortion or reproductive rights on the ballot. Among them, Nevada, Pennsylvania and Arizona. Battleground states that could decide this election. As the nation's first female vice president, Harris has been the leading voice on reproductive rights for the Biden administration. David, she's been going state to state hoping to rally Democratic voters around this issue. David. All right, Rachel Scott covering the race for president tonight. Rachel, thank you. We turn next to Israel and to a rare and stunning rebuke of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu right here in the U.S. And it came from the highest ranking Jewish official in the U.S. government. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer suggesting elections be held in Israel and saying Netanyahu is an obstacle to peace. Matt Guppen from Israel tonight. Tonight, that stunning rebuke from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer calling for Israel to hold new elections because he believes Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is an obstacle to peace. As a lifelong supporter of Israel, it has become clear to me the Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. In a 40-minute speech, Schumer, the highest-ranking Jewish official in the U.S., saying Israel has lost its way and demanded it do more to protect civilians in Gaza. Netanyahu's Likud party criticizing the speech, saying Israel's not a banana republic whose leader can be swapped out. The ramped-up rhetoric comes as the IDF prepares to launch a major military operation in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. The Israeli military now says it will evacuate 1.4 million displaced people there before it attacks. But with Gazans facing famine, the White House and Democrats under increasing pressure for a ceasefire and for increased aid into Gaza. Today at a border crossing not far from Rafah, we spoke to the Israeli commander responsible for allowing aid into Gaza, Israel blaming the U.N. for failing to distribute aid. Specifically, are you saying that there's no hunger or that there is no starvation in the north of Gaza? I'm because saying, the U.N. is about to declare a famine. I'm saying that there is no starvation. There are challenges. There are challenges of accessibility also. David, here in Israel, Senator Schumer's remarks cheered by some, including the head of Israel's opposition. But despite the fact that Netanyahu is deeply unpopular in Israel, even some of his staunchest opponents said it should be only Israeli citizens who decide the prime minister.
David. Making global headlines tonight. Matt Gutman, thank you. Back here in the U.S. and the spectacular images tonight, SpaceX and the launch of its Starship rocket today, the most powerful rocket ever built, like crossing several off. major hurdles, but then burning up on its way back to Earth. Tonight, SpaceX and NASA saying that much was learned today, but the bigger question remains, how soon do they plan on putting astronauts on one of these rockets to the moon? Here's Maria Villarreal tonight. Lifting off from the coast of South Texas today, SpaceX launching its third test flight of Starship, the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built. We are feeling the rumble. The spacecraft NASA hopes will one day help bring astronauts back to the moon. And passing supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound. Starship traveling farther in space than ever before, almost halfway around the Earth. Oh man, I need a moment to pick my jaw up from the floor because these views are just stunning. SpaceX expected Starship would survive re entry to the atmosphere, but break apart when it hit the ocean. The heat chill tiles doing their work up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit, that those heat chill tiles are just Instead, the spacecraft lost contact and burned up on its way back to Earth. David, the FAA will now investigate what worked here and what didn't, but SpaceX is already building four new starships they are hoping to launch by the end of the year with the stretch goal of getting astronauts back to the moon as early as 2026. David. Maria Villarreal tonight. Maria, thank you. When we come back here, the frightening accident in upstate New York, the FedEx tractor trailer sideswiping a car with several people and a baby inside, the truck then tumbling off the throughway bridge. The image is here in a moment. And then Prince William tonight and what he said about Princess Catherine today. Tonight, the frightening accident in upstate New York, a FedEx truck sideswiping a car with several people, including a baby inside, the truck then dangling from a New York State throughway bridge in Pittsburgh outside Rochester. Five people, including the baby, all treated for injuries. Everyone is expected to be okay. When we come back here tonight, Prince William's public appearance today, what he said about Princess Catherine. And here in the U.S., they thought their dog was gone. And what a runner found 1,000 feet up the mountain. To the index tonight, Prince William appearing at a children's charity event in West London amid growing concern about Princess Catherine not making an appearance in weeks herself. William playing with children, decorating cookies, and telling the kids today, my wife is the arty one. The reference to Catherine comes just days after Princess Catherine apologized for editing an image of her and their children, only increasing questions about her condition following that abdominal surgery in January. When we come back here tonight, America Strong, the pet dog they thought lost forever. And then the discovery, 1,000 feet up the mountain. You have to see this. Funny tonight here, America Strong, the physical therapist and runner, headed up the mountain, documenting his run when he suddenly saw something else. Tonight, outside Honolulu, the incredible rescue. Physical therapist and marathon runner Sergio Florian was training on a mountain on Oahu's east side, recording and sharing his training runs when all of a sudden he saw this. Oh, hey. A lost dog, shaking and dehydrated, curled up near the edge of a 1,000-foot cliff. Oh, are you okay, bro? No. That runner did not hesitate. I'm going to get her down. Realizing the dog was too weak to make it down that mountain, he picked her up, all 45 pounds of her, and slowly and carefully carried her down that steep, rocky trail. I don't know who the, whose girl this is, but uh, we got to find out. I'm just taking a rest in between. I'm going to take her down. Eventually making it back to his home, giving her much needed water, feeding her, and getting word out that he had found the dog, eventually finding the owner who had lost her on a walk. And right here tonight. Aloha, David. Welcome to beautiful Hawaii. That runner and rescuer, Sergio. As you can see behind me, that's exactly where it was. I got her trust first and started to pet her, and then she let me hold on to her, and that's when I knew that I could save her. He says his knowledge as a physical therapist, his endurance as a marathon runner, all helped him get that dog down to safety. I just did what anyone would have done if they could. Uh, I'm just grateful that I was able to help her. Tonight, the dog, whose name is Stevie, home and on the mend, and her owner, grateful. Anytime you're in a position where you're able-bodied and you're in a good place and you can help someone, you should lend a hand. Well, we all think of our dogs when we see that one. Thank you, Sergio, and we're glad Stevie's home. Good night.
thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.